In the heart of Africa lies a country that has captured the world's attention with its exceptional achievements. This landlocked country in southern Africa, with its rich diamond industry, tourist attractions, stable democracy, and economic growth, was an enigma to its neighbors. However, all good things must indeed come to an end. Amidst the whispers of success and prosperity, a cloud of uncertainty looms over the nation. From the shimmering brilliance of its diamond industry, to the awe-inspiring strides in governance, social development, and environmental conservation, Botswana has truly mesmerized the world. But behind this extraordinary story lies a series of challenges that could alter its course. In today's intriguing episode, we will look at what makes Botswana one of the most triumphant nations today. Then, we will be discussing how Botswana is expanding its economy and focusing on other sectors. Then we will talk about the numerous deals between Botswana and De Beers. Next, we will look at the Botswana president's worries about the Botswana-De Beers deals. Lastly, we will discuss some of the concerns the world has about President Masisi. Together, we will navigate the intricate web of income inequality, youth unemployment, and the ominous shadows of corruption. As we uncover the secrets of Botswana's diversification efforts and examine the impact of shifting regional dynamics, we'll strive to answer the burning question. Can Botswana sustain its legacy of success, or is its tale nearing its final chapter? Before we do, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the hottest and trending global economic insights. This is Botswana's unique success story in Africa. Is it coming to an end? Diamonds played a pivotal role in enabling Botswana's extraordinary success. The world's largest open-pit diamond mine, Orapa, was discovered in 1967 by De Beers, the foremost worldwide diamond producer. While many African countries have seen their abundant riches wasted, Botswana's founding leaders successfully forged a partnership with the corporation. They successfully maintained a low level of state debt, established reserve funds, and simultaneously improved infrastructure, healthcare, and education. All these were made possible using the money made from diamond mining. Botswana established the Diamond Trading Company and implemented sound fiscal policies to efficiently manage these revenues and reduce the dangers related to resource dependency. However, the country's excessive reliance on diamonds makes it susceptible to changes in the price of diamonds globally. Also, it calls into doubt the diversification of its economy. Another fundamental pillar of Botswana's success story is its commitment to good governance and political stability. With free and fair elections and a strict application of the law, the nation has maintained a solid democratic system. Transparent and responsible governance has cultivated a climate that encourages attracting foreign investments and ensuring the equal distribution of resources. Botswana's stability, however, could be threatened by recent political changes and new problems. These developments raise questions about how long its prosperity would last. Furthermore, Botswana has also made notable advancements in social development and human capital investment. The administration has prioritized healthcare and education. This decision has led to appreciable increases in literacy rates, access to high-quality healthcare, and the elimination of poverty. These accomplishments have helped to create a vibrant middle class and a more excellent standard of living generally. However, the sustainability of Botswana's achievements is threatened by important issues like income inequality and youth unemployment. Will Botswana's legacy remain, or is it about to make an extraordinary turn? The diamond business in Botswana has been a significant factor in the country's spectacular economic progress. But the government has put policies in place to diversify the economy. These initiatives will also lessen its reliance on diamonds after becoming aware of the dangers of doing so. The tourist industry is one of the main targets for economic diversification. Botswana is a desirable travel destination because of its breathtaking natural beauty and unique wildlife populations. One of its hotspots is the Okavango Delta, which is renowned worldwide. To promote sustainable tourism and take advantage of this potential source of income, the government has invested in infrastructure development, hospitality services, and conservation initiatives. Another industry that Botswana hopes to boost is agriculture. 
Despite its dry climate, the nation has evolved in agricultural practices, including using cutting-edge irrigation methods and promoting crop diversification. These new strategies improve the nation's food security while generating job opportunities and lowering import dependency. Botswana has also been investigating potential in the industrial and service sectors. The government has implemented measures to promote innovation and entrepreneurship, attract foreign direct investment, and create specialized economic zones. Botswana wants to become a regional center for manufacturing and service-based sectors by utilizing its advantageous location and talented labor pool. There are several agreements between Botswana and De Beers. Debswana, which mines 95% of the diamonds in Botswana, the second largest producer after Russia, is owned equally by each party. Equal shares are distributed among the diamond trading company Botswana, which sorts the offtake. The government-owned Okavango Diamond Corporation, ODC, which sells its portion at auction, receives one-fourth of the rough stones. The government also owns 15% of De Beers. According to the company's estimations, the state receives about 80 cents of every dollar Debswana makes in Botswana, including taxes, royalties, and dividends. Diamonds make up over 80% of exports and over one-third of Botswana's GDP. Botswana has made outstanding progress in social advancement, political stability, and economic growth over time. However, recent difficulties have prompted questions about whether its success can continue. Is the country teetering on the brink of change? Is the era of Botswana's victory coming to an end? President Mokwitsi Masisi recently voiced his worries at a gathering of the ruling Botswana Democratic Party. He challenged the constraints of the current partnership with De Beers and the necessity for a more robust deal or total disengagement. Furthermore, he pushed for a fairer agreement and underlined the need not to be held captive by bad terms. This rhetoric has two possible causes, the impending elections and the desire of all African countries to derive the most significant possible advantage from their natural riches. This approach, however, has alarmed some observers who worry that rising nationalism, volatility, and populism would damage Botswana's status as a distinctive and stable state. Even though he has never made specific accusations, Mr. Masisi maintains that Botswana is still maltreated. He favors giving the Botswana Diamond Trading Company, ODC, more than a quarter of the raw stones. The African president thinks Botswana should participate more in the downstream processes of the diamond business, like cutting and polishing. He declared in March that his government would buy a 24% stake in the Belgian diamond company, HB Antwerp, to accomplish this goal. Other African governments eager to expand beyond exporting raw materials have noted this action. HB, a diamond cutting business, will use a new facility in Gaborone, the capital of Botswana. The company will use the facility to cut diamonds mined by Lucara, a Canadian company famed for its enormous stones. Additionally, HB intends to provide ODC's diamonds its diamond cutting services. The idea has generated questions because both parties have not disclosed neither the price nor the agreement's conditions. Even the technocrats at the finance ministry are still determining the specifics. Western nations express concern that President Masisi of Botswana would become more friendly with Felix Chisekedi of the Democratic Republic of the Congo due to this alliance. Chisekedi is the president of a nation with a poor reputation for resource management. Additionally, he is directly linked to one of HB's co-founders. De Beers asserts that moving its international sales meetings to Botswana starting in 2013 has actively aided the growth of downstream sectors. According to De Beers and HB, technological advances will increase cost effectiveness and permit more diamond manufacture in Botswana. They think tracing technology will make it easier to confirm the origins of diamonds. Hence, it would make consumers more willing to pay more for diamonds from Botswana. Unlike conflict-ridden Russia, the Pearl of Africa is often regarded as a peaceful country. De Beers estimates 31 cutting and polishing factories in Botswana handled almost $1 billion of its $6 billion global rough diamond sales last year. Western supporters of Botswana express worry at Mr. Masisi's remarks. His tendencies toward protectionism are also problematic. He placed restrictions on foreign ownership of enterprises in some industries. Furthermore, the Botswanian president banned the importation of several crops from South Africa. He boldly claims to have a wonderful relationship with Zimbabwe's resolute president, Emerson Menangagwa. 
The conflict between former President Ian Kama and his hand-picked successor, Mr. Masisi, is front and center. The former president claims that the present leader has the character of a typical dictator. Mr. Kama claims that there have been three attempts to poison him. Authorities in Botswana have accused Mr. Kama and said he was involved in a coup attempt. Although they have withdrawn those accusations, Mr. Kama, now a resident of Johannesburg, is still wanted in Gaborone for crimes involving firearms and other felonies. He declares his unshakable commitment to regime change during the forthcoming election. Both people fiercely drive to destroy the other, despite possibly harming Botswana's reputation. While Botswana's success story continues to be inspiring, it's critical to be aware of the difficulties and ambiguities that still lie ahead. Risks include those posed by income disparity, young unemployment, corruption, economic diversity, and external influences. Botswana may continue on its successful path, though, with proactive steps, efficient government, and a dedication to addressing these issues. The country has the capacity to overcome challenges and sculpt a prosperous future for its people. Botswana must focus on inclusive growth, sustainable development, and encouraging regional and international cooperation.